Hello everyone, my name is Matt and today we're going to do a thing that's actually a bit different. We're going to go over the entire guide that I've wrote and we're going to see step by step what I wanted to say, how you can play better, what are the tips, so yeah, they are all the stuff. Now if you want to find this guide you just type Tulia guide on Google and you go for the first link and first link. So mobile fire and then my guide, it's probably the first, it should be first. Anyway, now, um, we're going to go through all parts in this guide and I'm trying to be as, uh, I don't know, I'll try to explain as best as I can. Ah, that sounds so wrong, that's not good English. Anyway, anyway, let's start with it. Now, when you click the guide, uh, you'll first see this. Obviously, if you can, uh, if you like it, uh, please give me an upvote, uh, it helps on the site. If you don't, I agree. I dislike it. it's good or also but please say why because I it would break my heart if you don't anyway that's not important uh, let's see now uh, step by step I'm going to skip this initial section it's important it's a it's a too long didn't read section but uh, the real guide starts here so before that I really want to tell you that I do not really have time to cover all of these I mean all of these uh, but you can see any matchups here in this section and any uh, synergies with which champions you work with which champions you have easier ways to win if considering normal players the same skill level players in the whole game and which champions are not that great with uh, Talia and uh, we're going over some uh, of these uh, later some of these matchups but for now we're uh, interested in uh, going step by step now we have an introduction here uh, with some disclaimers that's not really relevant for you right now the relevant parts are uh, summoner spell builds and things like that so we're going to start with the summoner spells uh, I usually play with ignite and flash you know that it's the most useful against a lot of champions and it's really best in slot in many cases obviously you're going to play with heal against some champions that you cannot win lane could be Katarina could be Yasuo maybe if you think you cannot kill them exhaust would work against Katarina as well you're going to see that I put Katarina and Yasuo Z Zoe in many of these things uh, but mostly I play with ignite for the kill potential I recommend you if you want to generally carry go for the ignite if you think uh, the opponent is too strong for you or that you're not really Winning that matchup, uh, or you feel that you already lost against someone else, go with heal, go warrior, exhaust, or cleanse. Cleanse works against Zoe, Ahri, maybe Fizz, champions like that. Uh, exhaust works against high burst champions, Katarina, maybe Zed on his ult. Barrier works against a lot of champions, but I rather prefer heal, even though it has a higher cooldown. On 2 versus 2, it's extremely useful, but Barrier is more useful against uh, Ignite players. So, if you're a safe kind of player that wants to go and roam bot and that does not want to bother much with mid you should play with uh, maybe ignite or heal uh, ignite in case you don't want to fight mid but it's useful on bot the most useful on ganks from here it might be either ignite heal or exhaust when you gank one of these three it's are one of these three are extremely useful now i did not put teleport here because talia doesn't have that much burst without ignite or that much utility without an exhaust or that much survivability without a heal so you get the point now this is for the summoner spells i could talk all day here it doesn't matter that much just usually get ignite heal or cleanse based on matchups exhaust from time to time and barrier from time to time whenever you feel but mostly ignite in cases which you think you'll feed go for something else more defensive now for runes, I recommend to go for Electrocute, that's currently the best in slot. I discussed here also Dark Harvest, Arcane Comet and uh, Glacial Augment. Uh, someone said also to discuss Face Rush, I believe that's a strong rune as well, but uh, obviously we're going to talk the Electrocute rune because it's the strongest right now in many cases. Dark Harvest comes close second, Dark Harvest is strong for the jungle. Uh, but uh, usually you're going to get electrocute in most matchups because it deals the most damage and is probably not that hard to proc. Now secondary taste of blood, eyeball collection, revenue hunter. I uh, nowadays play with uh, the movement speed rune. I forgot the name, Ravenous, the movement speed one. But you can pick whatever you want, well, what, whichever you want here. I believe. This is a strong mid to late game rune, I, I like the other one for the early game. 
Now secondary you want Biscuits and Time Atomic. Uh, usually these are strong against many assassins, matchups, many burst matchups. Uh, League of Legends is more like burst that person instantly from 100 to 0, so you'll be interested in having this extra survivability, so use your Corrupting or Standard Potion and a Biscuit at the same time to gain a large amount of HP, which will help you survive. Uh, okay, you can play also with Dark Harvest uh, if you want, or with Arcane Comet, or with Glacial Augment or Face Rush. Glacial Augment build has uh, its own different Thing. you have to play with GLP, you'll have extra, you'll have also perfect timing. By the way, perfect timing, you can get it in Z matchups and Fizz matchups and matchups like that, or annoying junglers such as Vi, such as you name it. Uh, Dark Harvest is useful only if you fight 24-7 and again, it's useful only when you get a kill and then you proc it again in the same fight because the cooldown gets reset. Uh, resetting to 1.5 seconds on champion take now. Now, this is important because in most games in which you're not ahead, which are kind of most games because if you, uh, only if you're an expert with Talia you'll be ahead in most games, usually you'll be neutral or uh, below that, like, okay, in most games you won't be able to proc this twice in fights or three times, so overall you'll see that enemies, champions with electrocute dealt more damage than you because they proc it more often because it has a smaller cooldown and you should try to proc it on cooldown. Now I can comment here, mana flow band. Absolute Focus and Scorch, these are for poke more. Uh, this runes all of them ensure poke. If you cannot reach the opponent, if you feel that you want to stay away from him, such as uh, Silas or I don't know, uh, or Katarina or Fizz or Cassidy, um, sorry, Arcane Comet would be a very strong choice, but uh, again, I usually play with Electrocute in all matchups. Glacial Augment again, uh, Twin Shadows, uh, Zonia. All of that get reduced by your ingenious hunter, and also you can have all of these three runes: time warp, tonic, biscuit delivery, and perfect timing. Also put chip shot here because of the slows, and glacial augment gives you on auto attack some slow. That's okay. Now I've put here these three runes, uh, stat runes. I thought I think they are called. Uh, usually you go for two adaptive runes and to one based on cases, if they have heavy AD you go on mid you go for armor, if they have heavy magic resist you go for magic resist, if they have a well balanced team like 2 AD, 3 AP, no that's magic resist, 2 AP, 3 AD, something like that you go usually for HP, but normally I go armor or circle uh, or magic resist, sorry, based on how many, how many AP champions they have, how many assassins, how many AD. Usually you'd want one of those two. I put this first, I don't know why, but I think all of them are kind of the same in the long run. Usually I like to negate damage of the opponent on the mid lane, so I get one of these two. Now builds. The Eternal Ring versus Corrupting Potion. One offers more survivability, the other one offers more sustain. Now both of them are useful uh, in particular cases. Now ring is more useful early, till level 6 maybe. Corrupting potion is useful from level 3 to 9, something like that, because with Corrupting potion you can play more aggressively and you'll have heal from time or tonic. You'll have more heal and you can use it if you get also a uh, ring, the other ring, not Dorans, I forgot the name, Dark, uh, what's the name, whatever, you get the point, I think I have it, so, okay, this one, Dark Seal. Now you can bo go whichever you want, you can go, go even Corrupting Potion Dark Seal or Corrupting Potion Doran's Ring or two Doran's Rings, usually you should focus on survivability and not dying on lane, because you die on lane you lost the game, Talia is like that, you should play for surviving or killing the enemy champion but not necessarily dying, dying is not, it's not something that you want in League of Legends in general but on Talia is far more important because usually on Assassin if you die you should get a kill with you but on a Talia champion, on the champion that's like Talia, you will not get all the time the kill, so you will fall behind and you'll have problems. Okay, the core build is this, Ludens, Sork, Oblivion Orb and Stopwatch. Now, usually I focus now on getting Ludens, Sork, uh, Oblivion, and then I try to go for Void stuff if they have Magic Resist Boots or items like that. If not, I go for uh, parts of Rabadon or I finish Zonia based on how uh, tanky their team is. It's a very important thing to consider. Normally I go for this build 
minus the stopwatch in some cases in which I don't think I need it, but when I do need it, I mean, there are matchups. Lots of matchups that will ult you, lots of junglers that will engage with you on you, lots of Twitch, if Evelyn players that stealth around you and you will not do much because they flash your W. So this is a useful escape tool. <coughs> Uh, obviously, Obli uh, Moral and Omicron and Ignite are useful against uh, champions like Vladimir, champions like Yumi, Soraka and so on that has heals. Basically you'd want to get that every single game or Executioner calling if you... to tell your ADC that buy that item, buy Executioner calling on ADC as well to reduce heals from the opponent. I see this mistake a lot, just put a, I don't know, um, some note on your screen, just buy this item if they have heals champions with heals or maybe tell your ADC to buy uh, executioner calling and so on now Rabadon is a very strong source of AP but it's very hard to complete since it costs a lot of gold you'll get it into the mid to late game usually and it's very hard to get it fast now you'd want to get these first items like ring, boots, uh, lost chapter or even seal instead of ring corrupting potion works as well and you want to follow this order usually this is the order maybe this is the best order maybe not uh, I could do some alterations here like let's say you get corrupting boots uh, then you go for a dark seal then you wait till you have lost chapter obviously get vision words in between buys very important you should have at least two vision wars per game that's a minimum for every elo and i guarantee you 150 gold which is the total price of two control words will not make you lose the game now obviously if you have gold for completing ludens you won't get the vision word and then you will complete ludens you will complete ludens and get the vision word this is the extra gold purchase okay and you'd want to get lost chapter ludens sorg shoes and then oblivion orb as fast as you can now alternatively you go here for stopwatch you go here for Void Staff, Moralan Omicron, or parts of Rabadon. So you have items still here. You can see the mouse. Okay. You have items still where my mouse is right now. This Oblivion Orb. Now, in considering cases, if they have heals, you finish Moralan Omicron. If they don't have heals, you go for either Stopwatch, Void Staff, or Rabadon. So you go for Void Staff if they have Heavy Magic Resist, and you don't really need a Stopwatch. You go for Rabadons if you don't really need a stopwatch and you need more burst and they don't really have magic resist, they don't have spirit visage, they don't have mercury threads, they don't have items like that. You go for stopwatch when their fizz ults you too much, their Z ults you too much, their jungler engages on you too much or you get caught too much. Also get control words in between. I did not write here I think anywhere in the guide but you could get also a red trinket that could help your team especially in lower elos that's a yes buy because uh, no one buys it in lower elos so focus on getting a red trinket as well if your team does not have at least two red trinkets important two not one two also here I wrote the difference between Rabadons and Zonias when uh, when you finish them I wrote a bit on alternatives like get QSS if their Scar or Malzahar targets you too much get maybe Banshees to not be ulted every time from a long distance or maybe to survive their annoying Katarina. Tabbies and Merc Trades are extremely useful and also Banshees. Now I've seen a lot of people tell me about Rileys. Uh, I really like the item but in current meta it doesn't work as we thought. Talia is no longer that champion that could go straight into it as it was when she launched and the item also got changed and nerfed over time so this item I don't really buy it because if you want to be a good Talia player you should be able to hit your W's and combos and damage and do all your damage without the slow from GLP or realize now if you want to get help from them you can play with them but the build is not the most optimal one and you won't see many players having success with it you'll see very few players that actually have success with it and they are probably just above their current ELO so normally I'd go for the Electrocute Ignite uh, Ludens build because these items aren't that strong right now now Twin Shadows I should have put here for the extra GLP also, it seems that I forgot. And Morello, uh, Mejai, sorry, get this whenever you're smurfing, whenever you have some 3-0 kills, but beware if you lose with it, if you die with it, you're going to lose all the advantage, so it's a no-no if you're not smurfing hard. Like if you're in your Morello and you know that you are at currently at that level, it's kind of a useless thing to buy it because normally 
you could climb without it too. If you're in lower elos, then yeah, sure, feel free to go for it. Now abilities, I mean, I should go for this, I will go for this section real quick. Uh, as you see in this video, I don't know if it's, okay, it works, it works. Every time you go to lane, do this. No exceptions. Every time you roam, do this. Every time stay near walls. A lot of people forget that. I myself forget that. Stay near walls. Uh, whenever you're near a wall, you're going to get that sort of thing. Cues are completely a completely hard topic to discuss. I have some videos on it. Uh, I recommend to check my uh, three tips to the Leah guide. I think that's the name of the video. I talked about the dancing part of the cue. Basically, you'll want every time to be outside of that circle and in circle when you do small cues and get in and out, but the movement speed is not there anymore, so it's quite irrelevant if you're in the circle right now. If you want to do small cues, you'll be in the circle, you throw one pellet. If you want to do large cues, you're outside of circles. Dancing around them, I think the best way to understand this, how to do uh, workaround management, you should actually watch some videos. I have some other videos in this scenario if you want to look. Basically just do look what I do in early to mid game phase and how do I use Q. Uh, w and E are uh, two spells that are combined. Basically you throw someone on rocks and you damage them uh, with the dash that they do through your rocks. Now normally you should press, uh, you should put two three doom dummies into the practice tool and practice this combo as much as you can. Like play ping pong with it. I also have a video somewhere below. Uh, you should practice this combo as much as you can if you want to start playing Talia. This is the most important combo for Talia. This is the only combo for Talia, and you should be extremely careful with it. Uh, because if you miss it, you don't do anything. Now, also, they get damage to the dashes, but it's not that strong. Now, press two times to cast your ult, very important. Uh, one time to just throw the wall. These are all the abilities. Normally you want to max your ultimate first, then your Q, E, and then W. That's the order. Your spells do not your spells do not generate minion aggro, so basically when you're in lane you can Q the enemy and no one minion will hit you unless there are no minions. And also if you auto attack the minion will you will trigger minion aggro. Now I wrote a bit about win condition, how to do what to do in each phase combos and uh, more things like gang pads. Uh, practice tool drills matchups and so on now I could talk for like two hours about this that's but I think that defeats the case of the video I'll be already at 17 minutes into the video uh, but I think I will just go over it really fast in like the next five minutes because we don't want to spend an eternity in this video you can read this it's all here it goes nowhere and it's here for you to to help you to make you understand how to play Talia and how to win now normally the win condition is usually uh, how you win the game okay it, try to either either fa feed your adc by going bot and getting him kills or your jungler if you have a hyper carry or your top if you have a jacks or champions like that that's the first option the second option is to do an engage with your ult and then weq on their carry whichever that is being maybe a draven twitch Xaya and so on but be careful that, that if you miss the W you lost the fight uh, you stop watch immediately after you did that engage and the last option is uh, to try to care with someone to try to play with someone uh, do a queuing and try to get fed with that person and roam a lot someone who plays Kindred, Rengar, Ramos champions with speed champion that can be versatile mobile and be around the map champions with some utility uh, that you can roam and gank with not uh, that they can gank your lane but that you can gank with other lanes like you and your duo partner will go bot you and your duo partner will go top get objective and so another win condition is trapping people in pits or away from pits like baron or dragon so they don't reach you when you're doing infernals so they don't reach when you do barons or that you use your ult to trap them into the pit and get barons and get things like that uh, win conditions are complicated so I recommend watching full games to see uh, what happens in those games it's usually a team effort but sometimes I won games myself uh, sometimes I did a very good ult a very good WQ combo and won the game people told me oh my god you won the game so it was not a team effort it was a solo effort but in most games it will be a team effort what you want to aspire to and to do is to actually be the one who wins the game solo by doing that nasty WQ combo on their carry doing that strong counter baron play doing that full combo on someone one shot and came and things like that 
Now I wrote here what to do at first levels, at mid game and late game, most importantly at first level do not die, uh, try to get 8 CS per minute, try to avoid ganks, that's related to not dying, and try to kill the enemy opponent if you can and roll. Roaming can happen at any time if you uh, manage your CS well. Managing your CS is the most hard thing that you can do in your League of, in League of Legends. You can learn about CS managing by Faker, by Dopa, by players from players that are way above <laughs> the normal standard player, and you can understand from them. Uh, usually, I lose CS when I roam, but usually I get kills from my roams. Now, every time I do a fair roam, I get behind. You get the point. In other levels, you shouldn't get too behind. You should get advantage to your bot lane if you can, get advantage for yourself if you can, and not die mostly. Get to the mid game and try to get the full combo on someone, because if you have 8 CS per minute into the mid game, you're going to deal a lot of damage on someone, because that someone will not have that much CS or will be a bit under leveled, and you're going to get some gold from it, if more of win team fight, you will going to win a team fight because of it and so on. Now into the mid game you do what, into the, into the late game you do what I told you into the win condition, now you can read this if you want after that. Uh, obviously we have some combos, the simple combo WQ uh, or EWQ depending on how you want. If you press E first you're going to slow the target, if you, if you press W first you're going to surprise the target mostly but they still can see it, they still can flash it. So you have to remember that if they flash it you're going to be in an open window that you have nothing to escape, nothing to deal with unless you have your own flash but usually your W should be your main tool, Talia revolves around that W and a bit Q but mostly W because that's what enables her as a champion. Now there are some tricks, you can Q and flash for the palace to follow, you can do a melee ultimate to push champions away, you can do the Q plus R, I did a video about it, You can if you remember it, so basically you Q then use your ult. Uh, you can uh, do some pushing tricks uh, either by using WQ combo and the moving bot or you can just Q spam uh, but it takes a bit longer probably cheaper in mana as well but still uh, now I wrote here also team fight engage do the full combo then stop watch then flash away it's generally a good combo but it's a high risk high reward play so you should be careful with that here is the video that I talked about it about circle management if you want to look at it uh, I wrote a bit about types of roaming you can do an aggressive roam, a defensive roam to react to someone else's gank. You can go roaming to put vision words and you can fake roam, going to the middle of the lane, going back. Now, uh, I wrote a small cheat sheet here that you've seen in the past videos, how to actually, um, when to actually roam, how to assess the risk, how to uh, notice where their jungle is, how to win with the vision and things like that. I wrote, I put here two maps with paths, I made numerous videos about it in the past, this video especially. You can see here some of the good paths to walk and then to wall, to use your ult. I gave you some practice tool drills, the one with WQ combos on minions, on, um, sorry, on dummies is the most important. Just practice your full combo and you're going to um, have an easier time in ranked. Ooh, I talk too much. Now. That's one combo that you can practice, another combo that you can practice either the QR1 or the Q flash one, and the last thing that you should practice in practice tool is get as many CS per minute as you can while also poking a dummy or an enemy champion. Uh, just focus on the auto attacks and the last hits. Matchups, this is a very long section and I don't think I have much breath left for it, so uh, I wrote here a lot about them, if you want to see them individually, you can see them here, the most, I don't know, important ones and some synergies, but also you have an entire list above. Uh, then again, I left some YouTube links, some conclusions, and okay, some other stuff, some useful links here, if you want to improve or to listen to good music, if you want to see statistics or builds from pro players. If you want, you can also join Talia Mace or my Discord if you want to keep talking. Uh, but normally, the biggest part of the guide is in the matchup section, which is here, where we have a lot of matchups with text pages and pages of matchups. Uh, the synergies section, and also maybe the roaming slash uh, win condition phase, lane phases, and so on sections. Now, this is the Talia guide. This is the, I don't know, fast, too long, didn't read, 
well, not really fast, medium fast, <laughs> maybe not so fast, full to Lia guide. I really hope it helps. I really hope you enjoyed it and please leave an upvote if you did. Uh, also, if you want to join my Discord, I'm there for questions. Also, I'm there when, whenever you need me with anything. Uh, and I don't know, good luck in future games. Maybe I'll do some games with other champions or some guides or some plays or whatever. Uh, I really hope you're okay with that since this is mainly a Tulia only channel. But uh, I don't know, we're going to see what comes next. Uh, I'll keep making that series even though uh, maybe it doesn't have that much success or that I don't play spectacular with the Diamond Adventures. And let's hope we all reach higher elos and we all learn in the future and we are progress together as a community and as individual players. Now I really hope you enjoyed this guys, see you next time and have a nice day, night, day or night wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching this, goodbye.